Hey, Ralphie. Me and the boys have got a job to do, and I need some wheels. Uh, and, and, hey, Tommy, I got this here, baby. It has about 40 horsepower and goes almost 60 miles an hour. Ain't nothing swanky, but it's it's a good enough drive. You get into it easy. You just take take this little baby and stick it in here. P -p 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 Pry it a little, and when it clicks, you got it. It's a piece of cake. Thanks, Ralphie. Keep you now, Tom. We'll talk at the bar later, Tommy. I still gotta stop by Vincenzo's for a gun. Vincenzo, I need some kind of gun. Hey, Tom, I think this'll do the trick. It should work. I wasn't planning on using it anyway. Thanks. something. I said it would be better by car than on foot.
Ava, you've broken the law. I'll have to find you. Okay, mm -hmm. officer. Well, here's the dough. I hope it won't happen again.
gets a country in, then the clock's gonna tell out of town. Wait for us here, Tom. We'll be back in a bit. Okay, let's go. Tom, I, I took one. Ah, it Jesus hurts. Jesus Christ, Polly. Tell Salieri from here on out this place is ours. Capiche? Don't come back here. You'll end up in worse shape than your friends. Get Sam. They want to beat some information out of him. Get him out of there. But I gotta get you to a doctor. That'll wait. First, get Sam. Screw regular routine.
Get up, Sam. Oh. It's over. He really went to work on you, buddy. Let's go. Oh, Christ. Oh. It's nothing. Mm. You'll be all right. The doctor will put you back together again. Oh. You're tough as nails. Oh, oh shit. That's it. I'll get you back in the car. Uh, Everything will be okay. Don't move, scumbag, or I'll fill you with holes. Come on. Just try it. You won't get past me. Sure thing, buddy. Uh, just stay cool. Everything's okay. Just go. No problem. Just try it. No. God. Uh, do Get him.
That's regular routine. I wonder what the next job will be like. That's how I got into it. One minute a regular cabbie, the next a respected mafioso. You were all right with killing people? Usually people have a problem with that. You know, I ain't one of those people with a thirst for blood. I don't need violence in my life, and I don't look for trouble, but I also don't have any remorse. They wanted to outsmart us, so we had to outsmart them. No excuses. It was all the same to me. I wasn't interested in the fates of other people. Everybody said it was just business and that the family sticks together. It was different from living alone and nobody giving a damn about you. Suddenly you're respected by all the people you meet. Everybody knows you can help them, but you can also destroy their lives. And everybody tries to ingratiate themselves to you. And what about the police? You just walked away, just like that, from a massacre. Didn't you have any problem with this? You work for the police. You ought to know. You know, the Mafia runs the whole city. The Salieri family makes over 25 million bucks every year. The papers were full of it. But nobody saw nothing, if they wanted to stay alive. We paid off the bureaucrats six grand a month. Your bosses had liquor at trade price and got payoffs for special jobs from both Salieri and Morello. Case closed, lack of evidence. Cops would even move shipments of drink for us. I guess you'd have heard something about that. So what about your two friends? Well, they were better off than you'd think. Salieri had a good doc for his boys, and it's not like he ever asked any questions. In a few weeks, they'd be healthy and back on the streets again. The only one who worried us was Morello. He wanted to be the big cheese, which Salieri couldn't let him do. Salieri had no intention of being in second place. You know, a person becomes a Don because of his thirst for power. And he doesn't care about any other rules than his own. That's how it is, detective. So he'd be his own boss, independent of the police, of the state, of anyone. That's why a person becomes a Don. Salieri and Morello both wanted it all. They kept sparring with each other, but they both knew that if it all blew up, it would be hell. The big difference between them was in their methods. I heard a little story about Morello. I, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, sir. Um... You I idiot. mean it. Do you know what you've done? Do you know how much that car cost? I, uh, I was driving slowly, Mr. Morello. Uh, I don't know how, uh... Do you mean to say that I... I crashed into your car? Uh, uh, no. Sir, I, uh, I only... I wanted... Uh, no, sir, I... No! Bastard gets in my way! Salieri built his respect as a businessman. Everybody knew that they didn't need to fear him if they did what they should. They knew that if they needed something, they could come to Mr. Salieri. So Salieri made friends, often helped people with various problems, and expected the same in return. When somebody crossed him, they broke a cardinal rule, and everybody knew what would happen. Morello was just a mean bastard. He built his power through violence. Even his friends feared him. Most people just tried to avoid him. Listen, Tommy, I have a delicate job for you. I don't know anyone else who could do it better than you. You're a good driver, and you have experience. 
Well, to make it simple, tomorrow all the best motors are going to race at the city track. And I bet on one kid who's been a favorite up until now. I helped him along in his career a little. I like fast cars, and I said to myself that I could make back a little on that investment. You understand? And then Ralphie starts saying that some European has come over, and his car is certain to win. Ralphie knows cars. He's real good with them. But otherwise, he's a complete moron. What, he couldn't have told me before I bet on the kid? But still, what the hell is a guy, God knows from where, doing here? These are American races. Me and the consigliere here were thinking about what to do, because a lot of our boys have bet the same as me, and they certainly wouldn't be happy if they lost their dough. And how would that make me look? Like an old idiot. Tommy, I can't let that happen. We thought with our consigliere about what to do with it. If something happens to him, that's no way. It won't be fair play. I won't enjoy my winning at all. Ralph told me that he knows a guy who guards the racetrack garage. Tonight, you're gonna go there and take this European's car to a mechanic who knows his way around these machines. He'll take a look at theirs and maybe improve ours. As soon as he's finished working on it, you'll take it back. It's important that the car is back in its place before anybody catches on. And don't even think but about crashing it or getting I... caught by the cops. Are we clear? Yes, boss. If you pull it off, you'll of course get a share of the winnings. Now go. Ralph will tell you where and how. <laughs> 